Early on Friday, August 28, 2015, people gathered in Watkins Glen, New York, at the south end of Seneca Lake, the largest and deepest of the 11 Finger Lakes of central New York State. They came to begin a three-day, 80-mile prayer walk around the lake, and they had invited Sharon Day, a Native American leader of spiritual water walks, to help them pray to protect the lake and its surroundings from looming threats posed by the gas industry. Morning, everybody. Morning. 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 Ani. 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 I thought we would do the water ceremony song that we do from, from this part of the territory. When Sharon comes, she's going to teach you one that's from her territory. But they both have the same word in it, which is Nibi, which is water. water. Nibi, we sing Nibi Wabo. She'll sing a song that has Nibi in it. And some of you already know that song, too. So. Um, but I thought maybe to just to start this morning, we'd just greet the sun and we would sing that water song that a lot of us from this territory already know. And we will not film that song, please. Whoever is carrying the water first goes. You can follow them. You don't have to walk every mile. Um, you, you should stay with the group because there will be a car following and a car leading, and then we will have some cars ahead and also some cars circling. Don't kill yourself over this. What's important is the water moves and that we each move the water. Yeah. So um, you can get a ride in a car when you need to rest. So Duane has meditation cushions in his car, and he's going to drive ahead up to Crestwood and hold the space in meditation. Uh, so if anybody wants to join him there, and then you can greet the walkers as we, I'm sure Sharon will do a little prayer there in Crestwood. We will be uh, going forward from time to time uh, for three miles, something appropriate, to hold a meditation space for people to uh, take a break from a different kind of activity and, uh, and find silence and peace and hold that space uh, throughout, the, uh, uh, throughout the march. So we will uh, meditate while the uh, walkers pass by and then we'll uh, get all the meditation mats and so forth in my car and walk with them for a little bit. And then at some point, uh, uh, when it seems appropriate, we'll go forward again to hold another space in meditation. If it's your turn to take, um, to <coughs> carry the sacred water vessel, we normally, you either have to run up ahead of them and it's a, like a baton and you keep going, the water cannot stop, okay? It has to keep moving. Yeah, it only stops for lunch and dinner. <laughs> yeah, it goes to sleep. Yeah. Hello, Sharon Day. Oh, <laughs> 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 Greetings, <laughs> Kugum. Thank you so much for coming to our territory mm -hmm. to help with us. We welcome you. Yeah. We are honored that you're here and we're looking forward to all the teaching you have to share with us. Oh, you Come on into the circle.
Margie Rogers and I am one of the organizers for this prayer walk around Seneca Lake. This is our second time that we are doing this and you know the waters are being threatened all over the world and I just consider what's happening in California with the drought. It's, it's frightening and we have big industry wanting to move in here and possibly threaten Seneca Lake and well it is threatening Seneca Lake. And so I have protested. I have done, gone door to door with petitions. I have written letters. I've uh, ha organized forums. I have educated people. I have been arrested. And all I can do now is pray. And I was lucky enough to uh, be able to meet Sharon Day, and she has come here from St. Paul to lead us in this Native American, very ancient ceremony to ask the water spirits to help bless this water and keep it clean and keep it pure. And not just this water, but water all over the planet, seeing that it is so threatened.
name is? Sharon Day. And where did you come from, Sharon? I'm Ojibwe. I'm from Minnesota. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And you've led uh, these water prayer walks all over the country? All over the yes. Yeah. Um, what are you doing uh, this weekend? What are you doing this well, weekend? this weekend we are walking uh, this beautiful Seneca Lake. And um, it's, a, it's a really quite extraordinary, beautiful place. You all are saying prayers along the way. The yes, water. we uh, we begin with a ceremony in the morning, and uh, as we walk, we pray, we sing, um, in a, for the for the lake, in a, for the water, all the water, and uh, we end the day with a ceremony. And so, it really is kind of a walking meditation prayer. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And um, why is this being done here in Seneca Lake? I was invited to come and lead this walk by. Um, a group of people here at Seneca Lake who have been uh, uh, working uh, to um, uh, protect the protect the water. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's, there's some uh, threat uh, due to uh, the proposed uh, LP gas storage at uh, the Crestwood plant, and um, as I understand, uh, there's been. Uh, a, in terms of protecting it, they've blockaded the LP gas trucks from brine trucks from coming in, and um, and uh, uh, and so you know there's that that work that's being done, and this work is really done um, you know from a spiritual basis to protect the water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So including um, uh, non-native American people around. Mm -hmm. uh, in this sort of ceremony, uh, that all works together with your traditions. Well, I'm Ojibwe, and uh, so the work that I do follows Ojibwe uh, uh, teachings uh, about the water, and in our teachings, uh, uh, it's a women's responsibility to take care of the water. Uh -huh. uh, from since time began, we're the ones who go and gather the water and. Um, uh, I grew up doing that on my reservation uh, every morning uh, and where we lived uh, in the towns and country we would um, go and get the water from the well and get the water from the pump and you know when you when you're um, gathering water that your family's going to use every day you know you have a, a relationship to it and uh, today you know we just turn the spigot on and hope that um, there's water and that if there's water that that it's good uh, clean water to use um, so uh, being Ojibwe I follow you know the teachings that I've been given I um, uh, follow the Medewin, um spiritual path of my people and um, and uh, so that's what I know how to do mm -hmm. um, if they were having a Buddhist uh, lead the walk and they may be doing something entirely different. Right. Is there, um, there seems to be a, maybe a Haudenosaunee uh, presence here as well? Uh, there, there are um, a couple of other native people um, here. Uh, 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 Lee and his grandson and, uh, and then there's another uh, tribal woman as well. Uh-huh. Right. Right. So those are blending those two uh, prayer and well they're offering their prayers in in their way and uh, uh -huh. and uh, um, you know try to be respectful of their uh, you know over uh, 500 different tribes across the United States and we each have our um, way but uh, you know the the core values are the same
So what is the threat here to Seneca Lake? Well, Crestwood at Midstream, who is wanting to expand their storage of methane and butane and propane. And these are old abandoned salt mines and not stable. The science has proven that it's not stable and many people are against it. There's over uh, um, a million people and 30 municipalities around the lakes who have signed legislature resolutions against this project. And the only two people that are for it is Schuyler Legislature and Redding. Well, Redding, and there's people trying to fix that. So there's a huge movement against it. We, you know, I, I don't wish Crestwood any harm. I just wish they would go away. Mm -hmm. That's my prayer. Anybody who wants to ride can ride. Why did do you think um, people here brought you here as opposed to doing their own? Um, uh, the um, I think when I first came two years ago, uh, I was being uh, I was at an event where I was being honored and uh, uh, given the sort of Minnesota honoring uh, for being an environmentalist and um, Sandra uh, Stein uh, Steingraber Stein was. Uh, the national honoree and um, so we both uh, were able to talk that night and she heard me speak and when she came back um, she told uh, Margie Rogers and some of the other women about uh, what we do and so they felt like they had um, called their in, in representatives and uh, they 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 did sort of all the political work that that they were able to do and um, you know that they had protested and and I think when Margie called me she said um, we've done everything else we know how to do and and so um, you know um, Sandra told us about these walks and uh, perhaps um, we don't know what else to do would you come and so I did I did come and uh, we walked the lake um, two years ago and and then um, Margie called me again this summer and said uh, could you come back and so and I was happy to come back and I think you know like in, in the work that we do um, uh, sometimes we do begin that way we do begin with what we know we do begin with um, protesting and and uh, uh, writing letters to the newspapers and and uh, we do all those things that we're taught to do to affect change and uh, but we forget that um, uh, that spiritual component of um, in in uh, you know now that's where I like to I choose to start from that place. And not only does it threaten the water, if the water goes, it also threatens the industry, the, the wine industry and the uh, agritourism industry that we have and the organic farmers. And people, the wineries can't pick up the grapevines and move them. 
from someplace else. These are, they've been here for generations. So we are hoping that Crestwood will hear our prayer and decide to store their gas somewhere else. And many of the uh, uh, businesses and homes in this area are now going solar and really trying to push renewables so we don't need the fossil fuel industry. So there's not the great need. So, but this gas is uh, not really for this area, is it? Is it? No. That's right. I mean, I could tell you a whole long story about that. Yeah, I mean, it gets deeper. The, you know, you can do the top story and then it keeps getting deeper and deeper. And it isn't for this area. It is not for this area. It will be piped out to another place. We have plenty of gas storage in this uh, here. We don't need any more. Mm -hmm. And um, Crestwood bought U.S. salt because of the salt mines. They aren't here for the salt industry, but they're here to store gas. And they get all the profit. We get all of the risk because they are not fully insured. And the money goes someplace else for eight to 10 jobs doesn't seem right. How are they a threat, an underground gas storage, a threat to tourism, vineyards, uh, farming, all that sort of thing? Well, one little accident, one little accident will put us on the map for the place not to come to. You go over that old 80-year-old train trestle, Oh, the one that crosses uh, Watkins Glen State Park. Exactly, you know? exactly. Hey, down in, um, in downtown Watkins Glen, there was a truck that turned over right at the Harbor Hotel. It was filled with orange juice. What would we do if that was a propane truck? It would decimate Watkins Glen. And, you know, it's... Who, what kind of tourists want to come here if there's flare stacks? You hear the traffic already. We already have a lot of traffic. If there's flare stacks and the booms against the lake, brine ponds, you know, who wants to come and relax on a lake when there's big gas industry on it? It just mm -hmm. doesn't add to it. It adds nothing. It takes away. And then, you know, think about, um, you know, just the little accidents that can happen, a pu you know, a puncture in a, in a pipe. It's, it's amazing what the threat is not worth having them here. The risk is too great. This industry will do m such great harm to people, tourism, the water for 100,000 people and all the businesses. I mean, look how beautiful it is here. It's beautiful, let's leave the natural world. That's my thing, is honoring the water and honoring the earth. That is why I am doing this. We have to, we are stewards of this earth and this water. It isn't to make profit, for somebody to make profit on. When I first did my first water walk, uh, which was uh, the, wa the walk that I led from the Gulf of Mexico to Lake Superior, um, what I learned on that walk was uh, all my life I had spent like protesting and pushing against um, injustice. 
And I was going to spend the rest of my life uh, moving forward um, from a place of love. And I was going to bring as many people along with me um, as I could. Mm -hmm. And so um, for the past seven years, uh, yeah, that's what I've done. On Sunday, the third day, the water walkers complete their 80-mile journey. Carrying the pail of sacred water back down the east side of Seneca Lake. The sacred water is finally returned to the south end of Seneca Lake at Clute Park in Watkins Glen, from whence it came. 